So good morning, everyone. So today I'm gonna, so in my sophomore year, well, the year going into my sophomore year, I made possibly the best decision of high school, at least so far. I realized I had a spot missing in my schedule, so I decided to take a class called Science Research and Methods, although I didn't know too much about what the class itself entailed. I soon came to learn that science research is all about researching any topic in science, whatever interests you, and then conducting your own experiment on that topic. It was through this class that I really discovered my own passion for science research, and I also learned a lot about what research is like in the real world. So currently, I am in my junior year, well, nearing the end of it, and I am working with university researchers on targeted drug delivery to the brain. I approached them quite a while ago now, and I approached them with the idea of using these molecules called bullet amphiphiles and using them to encapsulate a certain chemotherapy drug and using that to deliver the drug across something called the blood-brain barrier, which is often what makes deliver, drug delivery to the brain so hard, is that it's very hard to pass this barrier. And we've been working on this for months. We've done so many trials, so many experiments, yet it feels like we've barely started since this is still an ongoing experiment. We aren't done yet. And that's really the first thing that I learned about science is that it can be painstakingly slow at times. But I came to realize that's just a part of it and embrace it because when I first approached these researchers, I wanted to jump right into the project, no delays, nothing. But they told me and they explained to me how that's not how research really works. And that especially with something like this topic where there's little research on bullet amphiphiles for drug delivery to the brain, and none that could be found on delivering chemotherapy drugs in particular, that we needed to take a step back. We had to research more about the molecules and the drug itself, just to really have a full understanding of the project. And yes, I, protest I protested this at first. I was so enthusiastic, so excited to start my experiment. But now, looking back on it, I understand that it was important to do all this background preliminary research in order to make my own project better and more in depth. And that's something that I never really knew because we never really learned that from a textbook at school. Which leads me to the second thing I learned in science is that not everything that you learn in school, that's not exactly how research can be in the real world. We've all learned about the scientific method at school in science class. And yes, for my project, that was our starting point, and that is an excellent guideline to follow. Although some experiments have particular needs, and sometimes that might not be exactly the best thing to follow verbatim. For example, during some of my research, I was looking at something called hydrogels, which are these gels that are liquid, well, the ones we're looking at, are liquid at room temperature, and then when you heat them up, they become, well, a gel. And I was looking at that with the chemotherapy drug, too, and I was just using that to help fill out my experiment and make it more in-depth. And generally, for these types of experiments, you would use just water as a control. However, we couldn't use water as a control for this because we are particularly measuring a temperature in which it gelled, and water, no matter how much you heat it up, it's not gonna gel. And so for this particular trial, we couldn't have a control, and we just compared the gels to each other, but that's okay because a control wouldn't have made sense. And I'm not saying that the scientific research method is bad, I'm just saying that sometimes you might have to wander a bit off the path in order to make it fit your own experiment. Although, when I was in school, I was under the impression that this was what you had to follow and that everything you learned in the textbook is exact, the exact concrete truth, which is really the third thing that I learned in science, is that although, yes, what you learn in school is the generally accepted truth right now, that's not always the case because that's really the beauty of science is that it is an ever-expanding pool of knowledge and something that you that you might learn in school now, when you grow up, they, there might be research to suggest that something else is the case. And yes, we've come a long way from the geocentric model of the Earth, but we have quite a way to go. And it seems like whenever researchers answer a question, that just leads to more. And that science is, it can always change. And so when you learn at school, obviously pay attention to your teacher, teachers, read the textbooks, but understand that this isn't the indisputable truth, that everything in science is, 
can possibly change. And since there's really no such thing as truth in science, and actually in my research class, if we say that we proved something, our teacher will tell us not to say that because you don't ever prove something, you support it. So to any prospective researchers that might be watching this, my biggest piece of advice would be if you have an idea, any idea, even if you don't want to be a researcher, if you just have a, the slightest interest in science, my advice to you is don't just keep that idea in your head. Go somewhere with it. Do something. Tell someone. Because when I had to approach these professors about people that I've never met and ask them if I can help use their lab and they can help me on this outlandish seemingly idea, it was nerve-wracking. It was out of my comfort zone. But it was worth it because research was really, in my opinion, just the most rewarding thing, being able to see your own ideas come to life and be tested. So if you have an idea, tell a researcher, a professor, or someone, because even if your idea seems impossible, there's a chance, a pretty good chance, they're going to say, this, we can do something with this. This can happen. And yes, your project might not go exactly how you want it to, but that's just the part, that's just a part of science. Sometimes you have to change things in order to really accurately test it. And who knows, maybe in 50 years, your seemingly impossible idea is going to be taught in schools. Thank you.